Jake Kelsner calling the signals, takes the snap, straight drop back, pump fake, looking, looking, rolling right, turns the corner, he's going to run at the 10, at the 5, and still going, and he's in for touchdown. Hollis is back to throw, and he's looking long for Mike Bennett down this near sideline. He makes the catch at the 20, the 35, the 30. Kicked off by Cornwell. Looking for being in the end zone, and a touchdown. In Phyllis, it's a Christian community. It's a religious community. I said we got Catholicism, Protestantism, Judaism, and Bulldogism. <laughs> Football is a tough guy sport. The objective of the game is to bang into people and march down the field and impose your will on somebody else. At the 10, at the 5. It's confrontational, it's in your face, and we're coming at you and you're coming at us. You need to have a mentality that can mirror that. And Coach Curry with his gruff voice. You came here ready to play, you were thinking all week, you put it together. Maybe I won't make an opera singer with this voice, but. <laughs> And his strong build, he fit that mold perfectly. Very demanding person, impatient. I drive people, I love the game. He was a physical guy, he was a tough guy. So the marriage between that personality and that kind of person in the game of football blends perfectly. I can't sit back and say that I'm in the wrong game. It would come as no surprise that a storied career on the gridiron started on this field at a very early age. I lived right by his stadium. I was there every practice. My parents, they knew where to get me. Five years old, I was the mascot. They put me in the green and white. I went out, the team was involved. Then as I got older, I watched him. I was in fifth grade, and we watched him. I'd be standing behind the offense. And then, one of the linemen make a mistake, I would tell him. I knew every play, the blocking scheme, never missed a practice. I loved it. Curry starred in three sports for Larksville, and although undersized, his tough-nosed play earned him a full ride to Temple, where he played linebacker and nose guard while studying, of all things, dentistry. What are you talking about? I said, wait a minute, I want to teach school and teach football. That was it, the hell with dentistry. With dentistry behind him, Curry got his first shot at being the head man at a fledgling program in Lake Lehman. I was lucky. Tony Marchakaitis was the principal at Lehman. He hired me. My father at the time was on the school board and he come home one night from a school board meeting. He says, we hired a new coach, and we think he's going to be a good one. Curry wasted no time building a team. Lehman, a school better known for its marching band, had only 24 students out for the team the year before. Curry gave his players their first assignment. I said, I'm going to challenge you. He's wanted to get five guys come out for football. We had about 80 guys. Although the team had grown in numbers, they were still physically undersized compared to other teams in the league. And for any chance of success, Curry had to innovate an offensive system that was nothing short of radical in the 1960s. Everybody else very rarely threw the ball. When we come out, we look like Texas Tech of today. He had more formations than plays, and Howard Johnson had uh, ice cream flavors. That's what they used to always say in the newspaper. I ran this play where nobody saw it. We changed the whole thing. That's the one thing I love about coaching. Plotting, scheming, straight out Fox, the other guy. And out Fox he did, compiling a record of 23 wins, 10 losses, and one tie in four years, with his teams earning respect around the league for their gritty and spirited play. Our biggest kid on our team was maybe 175 pounds. And at that time in the Valley here, there was no divisions. 
Blake Lehman played Wyoming Valley West, Central Catholic, GAR, and Hanover. And those kids were big kids. They were established teams. They had a lot more people to draw from. I was only 120 pounds, and he made us play like we were 190 pounds. With a burgeoning resume, Curry set his sights on a bigger challenge down Route 11, one that would forever change the landscape of high school football. And the one coach in particular who was very familiar with, with Berwick said, it's a graveyard of coaches. Don't go there. That just gave me a challenge that I wanted to take, and I said, well, I'm taking it. At age 26, Curry was facing a daunting challenge. Berwick, far from a coal region powerhouse, had churned through seven head coaches in 11 years before he arrived. Curry rolled up his sleeves and immediately got to work. We got started a good witness program. And those kids, they're tough. They love it. They're not pushy cats. They're bulldogs. I think this has been going on for some 20 years. It's just a nice meeting place for breakfast. Just to talk football, talk about your family life, talk about how things are going. Some of the old players will come back, we'll sit down and talk about what they're doing. Even NASCAR races comes up in a conversation once in a while oh, yeah. because there's a couple guys on the table that like to bet, you know, here and there on, uh, on the races. <laughs> Eat his pumpernickel. I don't want that. <laughs> Is that what that is, pumpernickel? Yeah. Yeah? Back when he first started coming in, these were the things that he used to eat. He doesn't obviously eat this anymore because it was a health food kick. We joke around a lot of, about, about it a lot, and uh, he laughs, but these days are long gone. 